Hello, I am Deepthi and I welcome you to the series Talk Physics. In today's episode, we are going to talk about basics of electricity. When I say electricity, what comes in front of your eyes? Is it some wires or is it some bulb or is it your fan or some such device? We are dependent on electricity. But what is exactly this electricity? In simple words, it's movement of electrons. Electrons, as you know, are the basic constituents of atoms of which everything in universe is made up of. When we say we are using electricity, we are using the movement of electrons and doing work. So when you switch on a light bulb or switch on a fan, you are going to make use of movement of electrons and either get light from the bulb or get the fan moving and so on and so forth. The three basic quantities pertaining to electricity are voltage, current and resistance. Voltage is the amount of potential energy difference between two points on a circuit. In fact, any electric circuit is driven by the voltage. In other words, it can also be called as the difference in charge between two points. Voltage is measured in the unit volt. So you can talk about one volt as the potential energy difference between two points that will give one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. Here coulomb is the unit of charge. Of course, the name volt comes from the name of the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta who invented the first chemical battery. You will see voltage represented in different circuits or in on the devices by the letter capital V. Current is the rate at which charge is flowing. Rate of flow of charge is current. So current can be written as charge upon time. So it can have a unit coulomb per second, but more commonly its unit is ampere, again named after the scientist. Resistance is a material's tendency to oppose the flow of charge or to resist the flow of charge. Its unit is ohm. We can describe voltage, current and resistance using a, an analogy of a water tank. So here charge can be represented by the amount of water. Voltage can be represented by the pressure, water pressure and current can be represented by the water flow. So if there is a water tank at a certain height above the ground and at the bottom of the tank there is a tap, we can say that the pressure at the end of the tap can represent voltage with reference to the upper level of the tank. The water in the tank as we said represents charge. So the more water in the tank, the higher the charge. In fact, the tank can also be thought of like a battery, a place where we are storing certain amount of energy if we drain out a tank, a certain amount of water is going to flow down or 
you are going to get flow of current that means you are going to get flow of water in the analogy due to the pressure difference similarly you are going to get flow of current due to the potential difference and of course any hurdles in the pipe are going to represent or are going to cause resistance to the flow of water similarly any resisting part in a material is going to cause resistance to the flow of current in a material or in a wire basically amount of water flowing through the pipe is going to be the current and obviously depending on the pressure the value of flow of water is going to change similarly depending on the voltage value of current is also going to change now if there are two tanks each tank has the exact same amount of water and their taps are are also at the same level then after joining them no water might flow that means if you have two points with equal voltages no current is going to flow through that 